Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. Our ministry is a very calm one, but right from campus days, it's quite disruptive in the sense that it upset, upset the norms. So one of those days as the campus president, fellowship president of the Joint Christian Campus Fellowship, I had the mini crusade. And part of those who came to give their life to Christ, I didn't know. It's not my fault. Not like if I know, I would do anything about it. Was the girlfriend of the Capon, or the, the head of the cult group. And I graciously led her to Christ. And in fact, got her baptized in the Holy Ghost immediately. So she went there, and she knew from the meeting she was going to break the relationship. So she went and reached out to him and said, I'm done. Say, you are done with who? Then his boys, his boys brought him news that there's one pastor now that she's following. I said, yeah. So he sent four of his people to come and carry me. During the service. <laughs> Imagine preaching now. And some boys just came. Nakali come. They just came. And you know, there's if you want to if you drag a person by the hand, he's still quite on. They drag me by the trouser. You know, you no, know, when when people if you said nothing can be more dehumanizing than to. And they drag me like that. And go now, you fool. Mumu, you think they'll be past? And they drag me like that. And you know what members did? They could only watch. <laughs> and you know, our church was on the building street. Then, then I was not, it's not sort of like church because I was pastoring under a ministry. But I, I was hearing some people say, hey, no hey, pastor, hey, this thing is much more like. <laughs> and the boy is surrounded. I say, you. You think say that only Sabi preach this today? You go collect. Ha! Collect what? <laughs> and while they were talking, two amongst them were flashing their gun. That please no, we didn't come here to joke. I mean, these are people that killed. Something happened though. Something that made me slap myself. Am I a fool? I can't tell from where. I just couldn't stop laughing. You know? <laughs> I kept saying, because Norma, see, I'm not going to tell you, I'm telling you the fact, I was afraid. And that's the, the default thing to do, is that, I will beg, that oh boy, come down. <laughs> I'm not like you happy now. We'll sweep to pigeon, I'll beg you, Norma, Norma, you free me. I'll tell you guys, that girl, I know go feel collect the life you don't give Jesus, but, <laughs> we'll negotiate. <laughs> but, but, you know, this Holy Spirit, I just started laughing. You know, they laughed at me. <laughs> I wanted to cooperate at, because nothing is funny. These guys are with a gun. Stay minute. She was coming. At me. And one of them was looking at me. Hey, why you they laugh? <laughs> you think say with a joke? <laughs> I want to stop laughing. <laughs> then the guy started pushing my chest. Then he said something very strange. He said, Stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. Then the cultist said. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Who should rebuke you? <laughs> Honest truth. I shall rebuke you. I, re I was this though. Before my very eyes, the boy that was pushing my chest, that particular one, broke out in tongues. <laughs> Let me tell you. All those four boys that came that day, they are now preaching the same gospel. Yeah. All of them. I know you have heard me teach, but there's power. And when God shows up, He fights for you without you even having to do anything. He takes charge. The one who fights for a person, the one is fighting for becomes afraid. That God, is, I didn't say you should do up to this. Many of the names we call God are actually product of the encounters of different individuals. As God reveals himself to you, a new name is better. But there were instances in the Bible that it was God saying, this is what you should call me. I want to show you one of those instances. 
The book of Exodus, chapter number 34, the story really began from Exodus 33, when Moses was telling God, I will not go unless you show me your glory. I can't lead this great nation. I'm not saying, God, I'm not ready to proceed this year unless I see your presence. Huh? I'm not going to go anywhere. And God said, now that you have decided to see my glory, so in Exodus 34, something happened. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Now Moses was standing. The Bible said the Lord descended. Okay? And proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by. Now I, I, I have experiences of what it means to descend, for the Lord to descend. Let me tell you something you've, you've not heard from me before. Before our ministry started in Abuja last year, one of the first things I did was to travel down. Didn't preach, didn't do anything. Just prayed for some days. Just prayed, just come down to pray. And when we started, I think just in the early part of it last year, it got to a point, I started seeing symptoms in my body that I've never read of medically before. It's terrible symptoms. When we broadcast our morning prayers, many people didn't know that it was taking me sometimes over four hours to record an hour of prayer. So I couldn't go live because people would know something was wrong. And one of those days, I called my wife. I said, okay, now I have to go to the hospital. Yeah, my wife knows that this man doesn't talk like this. She said, okay, we have to go now. And as we were about stepping out, I said, oh, hold on. I didn't send myself here. My PPA is not hospital. So let me ask the one who sent me. I am going to the hospital. Are you aware? So I said, my wife, give me time. So I requested for a chair. So I sat down in our compound. And I said, God, you sent me here to preach and to raise you an army. Now I have to go to the hospital. Should I go? As I asked that question, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw what looked like a descent of a strong angel. It was like a bullet landed and hit the ground. That was all I just saw, like a flash. I told my wife, I'm not going anywhere again. The Lord is here. All the symptoms, 100%, they were still there. Nothing changed. I said, he has responded. I mean, I didn't come here on my own. So I went to bed that night. He feeling the symptoms. Around to one, they said, somebody wants to see you downstairs. I said, who? It was Oropo. Ah, I said, bro, Rafa, don't come this time of the night. But I just knew I have to see you. So I said, this is what is happening. We joined our hands, agreed as brothers. Because part of, I'm sharing this story. Because part of the things God will use for you is strategic relationships. All right? So we put our hands together and pray. I woke up feeling like a newborn baby. All symptoms gone. When God descends, He brings His own protocol. There is a dimension of the anointing where you are not limited by the atmosphere of where you are ministering. Because now you move with your own wave. When God moves, the host of heaven follow Him. I was with Bishop Waloke in his office and he shared a story with me. He said, son, there was a time when hell was let loose against me. He said he started over 100 days of fasting. The one of those nights, he began to praise God in his compound. He began to praise God at night in his compound. Then suddenly he discovered that a man was standing there he just discovered and the man called him by his traditional name that nobody calls him by and said come and he said to him I will say it the way he said it and I will interpret he said I will say it the way he said it and I will interpret you dance and rejoice I will make your enemies barren of good things when we come before the Lord and we are dancing. Does it look like a small thing to you? That the one who made the heavens and the earth have chosen that he will be honored in our praise. 
when we call upon God, we are not calling on lying vanity. The God that we call is real. Can you call his name again? Say, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Okay. That may look far away. Now, say it after me. You are my God. You are my God. My defender. My defender. Olubeja me. My defender. Imagine that the most powerful force in the universe is my daddy. The most powerful force. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please be seated. I just sense to say this year, God will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Amen. You didn't say that amen loud and clear. Amen. God will fight for you. Amen. You will hold your peace. You will know what it means for God to defend a person. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't get into a fight. Don't get into an argument. The fruit you will bear this year will defend you. It will vindicate you. You have been lied against. People have said, we will watch you and see how you will make it alive. I don't even know. Maybe there is somebody who even came to this church and somebody promised you that you are going to regret. Not lie. Who is it that says it when God has not said it? I lie. In fact, anything you do that the devil did not fight is not correct. One of the signs that you are in God's will is that it will be challenged, be contested. Say it again, he is the Lord. I want to give us a very important plea this year that we should praise God more. Personally. I, I, the media can help me project the remaining 30 verse 19. I would love us to really look at that scripture. That's my plea this year. That's my plea. I will praise God more. Praise Him more. Look at it. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them will make merry. When thanksgiving and the voice of merriment comes out, what is the next thing? I will multiply you. You will not diminish. Can you give us in King James? I will also glorify them. They shall not be small. What is the secret? Thanksgiving. What did Jesus do to feed the multitude with bread and fishes? He gave thanks. It's not by shouting, Oh Lord, more! Minister to him first. We must learn that this year. Is that okay now? Minister to him first. Oh God, I have come in three days fasting and prayer. What do you want? Just to say thank you. Ah, I will give even to the ends of the earth. What did Esther do? She went to the king at the time that you don't go to see the king. That's when the strategies of war have been formulated. And the king has married from different regions. Even not the queen is allowed to see that time. And she broke the protocol. She could be killed. And the king said, what do you want? He said, I have prepared a meal for my lord. <laughs> you risked your life so I can eat. Ah. Yeah, oh. What do you want? There is a reason why God seeks watch. Everybody asks him, give me, give me, give me. It is only a watchman that says, I've come to give you. I've come to give you praise. So this year, praise God more. More than you have ever done. You are a true worshiper if you can continue when God alone is your only audience. Even when you are alone in that room with God, do it. Roll on the floor. Dance. Some people don't really know how to dance well, like myself. Uh, watch music videos. Christian music videos. When they say, Bese, you try one by one. Little by little, you align with the beat. This year, learn something. Okay? When that brother was sharing testimony that he was going to have head-on collision, a word just came to my spirit. No grief for anybody. <laughs> this year, no grief or discouragement. Go forward regardless. And be careful of people planted around you who consistently bring you down. Be careful. Let me say this to you. It is a sign of poor esteem if you stay around your abusers. Something is wrong with your mind. Don't hang around people who have no revelation of you. If you have to explain who you are a billion times, they are not your friends. And some people bring you down at the expense of their own image so that as they now project themselves more. Very important. Don't allow it. 
Watch out for discouragement. Many of you have written things you want to do this year. Are you still motivated? Are you still motivated? Uh -huh. Just to let you know that different things will happen into the year. There's somebody sitting somewhere who is in a happy relationship. They may serve you breakfast. Make sure you... No, it's the truth. Is it? If no, it's the truth. Let me tell you ahead. Ink, see. They may. I'm not saying you should go home and go and prepare your breakfast yourself. <laughs> but just make sure you prepare your heart like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I praise God. Ah. So if somebody is not happy now and dancing and dancing, then my wedding is in May. Hey, chiki diki chiki. April. They give you pick four. <laughs> you know what pick four is? General market. Pick two. <laughs> Don't break up his pick X. We don't know the number of years. In the midst of it, God is still faithful. Some people have picked their own four. They're counting down. They don't know his ex. <laughs> some people, we pick. I'm not saying that it must happen. But for some, it's not going to happen. We get to a point where our motivation for praising God is not in the physical things we see. Are you with me? Our motivation is not in Regardless of the situation, are we that? I, I have one of my big daddies. I love the man. The man called us one time. He said, let me talk to you people as a family. He said, the day I ever become sick to the point that I cannot eat again, they don't spend money. Go and buy coffee. He said, because no matter what is happening in this life, it's food first. <laughs> <laughs> and the man proved it. He will be sick to the point that they have to carry him. The moment he hears the haruma, it will be healed till he's done eating. One time, I, I met a sin I should never see in my life. He told the son to kneel down. Ah. Him there, say, ah. Let me leave here. They know, stay. Ah. Okay. He said, he was sick. He said, Sunday, you made this a bar for me. <laughs> he was sick. The boy was looking. He said, you know what? Kneel down. He said, I'm going to do something. If I stone this ember to your forehead <laughs> and it stays, you are a bad child. It means it is too soft. He said, but if it stay there and open again, you are wicked. You want to kill me. It means it is too strong. Ah, I've never seen this kind of judgment before. Then he carried the ember. I thought he was joking. And he whiffed for the boy. He didn't touch his head, open the boy, fell back. Ah. Ah. Me too, I look at him and said, so this is what you made for your dad. We see. You are a bad child. <laughs> Let me tell you, Ito. The fasting starts this week. <laughs> but no matter what it is. That's, how many years ago? We erected a structure. The week we're supposed to move inside. The structure collapsed. The week. We spent millions of nights. I can tell you. Millions of nights. In fact, when we calculated what went down then. We are about close to about 50 something million there. I got home, took my food, I ate. That's right. I had a meeting, I did my meeting online, um, did my prayers with my wife, went to sleep. Following morning after devotion, I said to her, Oh, babe, just to let you know that uh, the building crashed. Yeah. What are you? I said, just to let you know the beauty. Hey, are you whining me? Because I used to whine my wife. My wife, I whine her. But she's online. Whine her. She will be rolling on the floor and be laughing. You think maybe I'm just reading King James. Thou heart, fearest amongst women. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, and she made calls. Is it true? That you came home like that? Yes. At famine and destruction, thou shalt laugh. That was what Job said. Regardless, make sure your mom, because listen to what I'm saying. When the devil was going to test Job, the devil told God, he said, listen, the reason why Job is serving you is because you have made an hedge around him. There is everything you are. He said, that's the reason why. He said, if all these things should be taken down, he will, he will deny you. God said, go and touch them. And the devil touched everything. And Job's confession was, do he slay me? Yet will I still praise him? You must make sure that the things that are the yardstick of your praise are not physical. And I tell people, and I, I say this 
before God. I'm saying this because he can test me even now. There is nothing I have that is an asset outside his presence. Nothing. Get a car. It doesn't change my mood. Thank God he's going to make the work easier. But it's not. It's not the basis for my esteem. It is a tool for the work. So the devil knows that the only way I can tamper this individual is to touch their relationship with this God. Said, my God is more than the things I have. More than the material thing. Now we must be able to tell ourselves this uncomfortable truth as believers. So that the reason, you, you won't believe it. Permit me to say this publicly. You will not believe that one of our sisters dancing and dancing in front. I got a message yesterday night that she lost her mom. And I was wondering, still here dancing and praising God and rejoicing. How? He is beyond all those things. He is. And no matter what the situation is, I will praise him. Is there anybody saying that? Say, no matter what the situation is, I will praise him. I want to beg you specially. And I want to please request that this year you will serve God more. This is the testimony of our lives. That some people have come to know God better because of our existence. What God wants to give you is not just a good marriage. What God wants to give you is not just a good job. It's not just a good health. God wants to make you co-laborers. He wants, see, the reason why he never killed you when you accepted Jesus is because you have a work. You have a work. And by the end of the year, the, the sum total of the things that brings you joy should not just be that you earn more this year, you got better contract this year, but that there are people who are in a better shape because of the grace of God that is coming through your life. You know, I, 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 I struggle to just go anywhere. Um, even at the airport, sometimes, meet people and they break down in tears. Break down in tears. I say, you have no idea of how you have blessed my life. You have no idea. I won't mention names. I was at the airport yesterday, coming from Lagos, and I got to the lounge, and I met one of Nigerian um, presidential aspirants in this last one. And I didn't want to disturb. Just want to I mean, just enjoy yourself. She walked up to me. I said, Pastor Lazarus. I said yes. She held my hand. You have blessed me more than you can imagine. You have. You are a blessing to me. Sometimes I meet people and, and they are shaking and they are crying. That you have no idea what God has used you for. When we get to heaven, see millions of people running down. That one message you preached. It saved me. I was about to commit suicide, but you helped me. You can't be everywhere at the same time, but your works can spread. But do you know people may say that to Pastor Lazarus that you are a blessing? But do you know the first time this ministry ever got a sound? It was a man from India who heard my message recorded by a phone. I said, this is too powerful for it not to be clear. You guys should go and price a sound. Many things I can afford. He sent us, I think, 250000 Yes, now it may look small, but then it was many things. That was the first time we could get a mixer hamp. Every time people get blessed, God credits it to his account too. It is not everybody who will preach, but some things will go far because of people's truth. And that's what our life is about. It's not about the things we have. And I know God is up to something when he asked me to leave the series I'm taking now. And he said I should. I should take. He said, deal with this now. Deal with this son. Deal with this. This is what I want to start the year with. Amen. This year I want you to live your life for God more. For God more. More dedicated. You. Maybe you are not called to preach the gospel. But do you know you can be an intercessor? You can have a prayer project that this person has blessed me so much and I adopt you as my prayer project. You may never find out that I'm praying for you. But every blessed day, it is a covenant between me and God that you are my new prayer project. Ha! Ah, the most powerful people in this kingdom 
are intercessors. All our ministries is at their mercy. Intercessors. Those who will go on their knees and cry out and burn incense on behalf of people who may never know. Please be seated. You know, sometimes as I pray, I tell people my primary ministry is not even teaching, it's not preaching. It's intercession. That's my primary ministry. In fact, that's where my topics are born from. That's, that's why when I teach, I struggle to hold tears because I have cried before God. I'm not teaching as one who wants to make sense. There are things God is dealing with. These are real issues. Ha! Ah. These are real issues. These are real issues. Are you with me now? Intercession. Let me say this to you. If the devil can get you to stop praying, he has done too much to you. He has done too much to you. The moment a person stops praying, ah, you'll be susceptible to many things. You'll be prone to many things. Many dysfunctionalities, many irregularities, many wrong stops. You'll be prone to them. The moment you can stop praying. I know some of you started the year saying this year, I want to pray better. I want to pray more. I want to do this more. All right, start. We have prayer meetings every morning. And if you look at the format, it's not give me, give me. No, it is to help you master a culture of prayer. You pray by yourself. Oh, yes. Ah, you pray by yourself. So you learn it. I'm going to pray. When you stay around those who are born and you're born. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like comment subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video and don't forget to share thank you